What's up, everybody? I'm David Hain. Welcome to episode 223 of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, please like, subscribe, follow, and share the link with your friends. If you'd like to get our curriculum, you can get the paperback or ebook of From Ashes to Destiny on Amazon. When we come back, we'll get into this episode entitled Thankful Park. Welcome back to episode 223 of the A to D From Addict to Disciple podcast entitled Thankful Park. Today's episode is going to be a walkabout through Thankful Park, and it really came from feedback I've gotten on other podcast episodes and some that jumped out at me basically said stuff like, you know what, David, I'm getting sick of these buzzwords that have been around the last few years about being thankful. You know, be thankful for this, be thankful for that. Every day, find three things to be thankful for. Find someone to be thankful for. Or another guy said, yeah, I'm sort of overwhelmed by all this. Having an attitude of gratitude, you know, why do I have to be so smiley and happy and grateful all the time? You know, I don't see a lot to be grateful for and get this attitude of gratitude. So, guys, that's what was coming into me. And so I got the thankful park that we're going to do a walkabout on. We'll see some quotes that people said, and then we'll see what the guys wrote in the journal, and we'll go from there. You ready? Cool. Okay, here's the first sign. It's a quote by Alphonse Carr, and it says, Some people are always grumbling because roses have thorns. I'm thankful that thorns have roses. Okay, let's see what the guy said. First guy says, Wow, that's a crazy quote. I mean, let's get real here. People like roses because they're blooming and they look cool. And they're a, they're a beautiful looking flower. No one is thankful for the thorns. I don't know who this Alphonse Carr guy is, but how to really be thankful that thorns have roses? I'd be better if the roses had no thorns. Okay, second guy says, this quote reminds me of a Guns N' Roses song. Every rose has its thorn. But the next line in the song is, just like every night has its dawn. And to be honest, I'm still waiting for my dawn. I've been stuck in the darkness of my addiction for too many years and getting cut by the thorns that I walk through in the darkness of my addiction every day, every night. And I don't know when my dawn is coming, but it'd be cool if it came and if I could be thankful that thorns had roses. I'm still waiting for the first bloom in my life, so to speak. Okay. Last guy wrote in the journal, to be the, the honest truth here, guys, I avoid the roses. When I see beautiful people, uh, they're not for me. If I see something that looks too good to be true, it's too good to be true. So I avoid the roses because I don't want to get cut. I don't want to be disappointed, and I don't want to disappoint other people. So my eyes are always on the thorns behind the roses, just being real. Wow. Sounds like we touched these guys right in the beginning of this walk. I appreciate what they put in the journals for us. Let's go down to the second sign. And it says, an old German Hansa proverb from back in medieval times says, Give thanks for a little, and you will find a lot. Let's see what the guys wrote in the journal. First guy says, you know what? I think my grandmother used to use that same quote and how she would be thankful for all the little things. And like she used to cook and bake a lot. And 
she would make the greatest meals out of nothing. I mean, there was nothing in the cupboards, nothing in the fridge. She was like, but she turned it into good meals. And I just thought she just was a great cook. I didn't realize as a young kid that somehow her thankfulness fueled her ingenuity into how to make a meal out of nothing. Okay, second guy said, you know what? Little things are not important to me. I realize that it, all the little things that are in my life every day are the nuisances. It's have to do this, have to hustle up some money, have to do, have to go there, look for a job, you know, shower, shave, take the, the right attitude. You know, it, it just... The little things are the things that bug me every day. And that's why, you know, I'm safer to myself, I think, on the streets. Because then I have no responsibility, no little things to do for anybody. Just take care of me the way I see fit. Okay. That's a tough one from that guy. But honest, I appreciate that. The last guy wrote in the journal... Well, for me, the little things and finding a lot reminds me of one day at a time from AA. And for me, each day sober is a little thing, but it's huge because it leads me to another month sober, leads me to another year sober. And I so appreciated the focus on just a one day at a time when I started my recovery because that little step, that little focus has led to several years of sobriety, and I'm thankful for that. Okay, good stuff from the guys again. Let's look at the next sign as we go down the path here. And this is an anonymous quote, and it says, I'm thankful for my struggle, because without it, I wouldn't have stumbled across my strength. Let's see what the guys wrote inside. First guy says, uh, I can't say I found my strength. I am still caught up in the struggle, and it's been hard. I'm like white-knuckling it and gritting my teeth and just trying to go on, just trying to push through. Some days I win, some days I lose. And I guess, to be honest, I'm still looking to find my strength, to stumble across my strength so I can build on something. Second guy says, I'm thankful that, you know what, I think I've stumbled across it. I'm gaining strength in recovery. And to be honest, I don't know, it felt almost like a pregnancy or something because it was about eight or nine months into rehab that things really started to click and they clicked in a way that I realized my cravings were disappearing. And things that used to trigger me weren't triggering anymore. And I guess my mind was clear-headed enough that I could understand what was going on. And it was a good thing. So I think I've strum stumbled on my strength. Don't know what the name of it is, but let's call it Strength in Recovery. Okay, cool. Let's see, there's one more thing here in the journal, and the guy said, you know what, I never thought of myself as an overcomer. I've always been a loner, labeled a loser, and that's led to a life of just sort of quitting things and giving up and heading back away on my own. And that's probably one of the key things that's keeping me battling to find recovery because I'm trying to do it alone and trying to find strength inside of me when maybe I need to figure out how other guys are doing it and ask for help or try to do what they're doing. Okay, great stuff in the journal again. Let's go down the path to the next sign. This is a quote by Oprah Winfrey. She says, be thankful for what you have, you'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you will never, ever have enough. Wow. 
That's a good quote. Let's open the journal here. First guy says, um, you know, the problem is what I don't have is all I see. You know, I ain't got much stuff. When I wake up every day, I see what I don't have. I don't have a good pair of shoes to put on. I don't have, I don't have, you know, I don't have clean clothes. And how do I be thankful for what I have when it's really, and I'm not just talking about my clothes, but basically all I have is rags in my life. Wow. Next guy in the journal says, you know what? I think this is a tough one for me because of my birth and my early childhood. You see, I grew up in poverty. Our family was really, really poor. And we were aware as kids of what we didn't have. We were aware of the gifts we didn't get. We were aware of the the clothes that other kids had and, you know, the stuff that we wanted, but we just couldn't afford. And I think that stuck with me all through my life so far. I, I am a guy who always wants more, but not in an extravagant way. I just want to fit in and feel normal. Is that bad? Okay, wow. We're getting some good, honest answers here, guys. Let's see what the last guy said in the journal. He says, actually, it's hard for me to focus on what I have because I'm always focusing on what I lost, and I lost so much. And I think this is telling me that the starting point to to gaining stuff back is to not to replace exactly what I lost or to try to get back the, the exact thing I lost, but to be able to concentrate on the little things that I already have that I didn't actually strive for, but they just came. Okay, let's go down the path to the next sign. And this is a quote from President John F. Kennedy. And it says, we must find time to stop and thank the people who make a difference in our lives. Let's see what the guys wrote in the journal. First guy says, yeah, wow, I never thought of that. You know, I've had lots of people help me, and I just thought, okay, it was our friendship, it's okay. It, but I guess I could start showing gratitude and sincere gratitude for those people who did help me. Next guy wrote, you know what? I've never actually thanked anybody because, to be honest, all the people that helped me were just doing their job. They were paid to work in the rehab. They were paid to run the shelter. They were paid to be outreach people. And so I was just, you know, part of their job. And who gets thanked every day for doing their job? So I never thought of thanking them. And, you know, the people who seemed most sincere about helping me, I always had a doubt whether they were helping me because they really cared about me or whether they were helping me because it made them feel good and they were actually getting their kicks by helping this no good addict turn his life around. Wow. We're staying deep here, guys. I hope you're sticking with us. We only got the last sign to go. I can see the end of the path ahead. And this is a quote by Cicero. It says, A thankful heart is not only the greatest virtue, but the parent of all other virtues. Let's see what the guys wrote in the journal. First guy says, wow. I think as we ended this walk, I, I got to say, I got to try to live that. I've got to try to figure out how to get thankfulness into my heart, not just, you know, saying thank you or smiling or having it up in my head, but actually get that into my heart and see what other virtues it can blossom. Next guy says, you know what? I agree. Being thankful does feel good. It makes me smile. And I think I can go deeper with it to make it like a new core value for me. Get it down in my heart so it really changes my life 
and my character grows new virtues because of a thankful heart. Well, guys, thanks for the walk. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Thanks for listening to this episode of the A to D from Attic to Disciple podcast. If you'd like to talk more about it, you can message me on the link in this podcast or by email at davidfromatod at gmail.com or go to my website www.fromatod.org and click on this contact page. Tune in Monday for our next episode and as always, stay safe and stay resilient. Thank you.